Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 3, Lesson 3, The Skeletal System All About Bones. Before we start reading, we're going to go over our main vocabulary. Our first word is appendages, which means smaller body parts that are attached to the main body parts. Things that are attached to or a part of, a more significant or important thing. Our next word or term is appendicular bones, bones that are attached to and hang from the main part of a skeleton. Our next word is femur, the long bone found in the thigh, the thigh bone. Our next word is joint, the area where two bones come together, where two or more things come together. And our last word is ligaments, short and tough bands of flexible tissue that connect two bones or pieces of cartilage and hold together joints. We are now going to move into our reading. Hello again. Before we begin, I want to know who is able to correctly spell the big V word that we talked about the last time we met. Who would like to try to spell vertebrae? Wow, I'm impressed. Today we're going to talk about another big word, appendages. I was quite small the first time I ever heard that word. I used to cling to my mother's leg all the time, and I would often hear her say, Ricardo is my little appendage. I never knew what it meant. Do you? Now, years later, it makes perfect sense to me. An appendage is something that is attached to or that hangs from something larger. Today, you are going to learn about the other bones in your skeletal system, the bones in the legs and arms that hang from your axial skeleton. These bones in your appendages are called appendicular bones because they hang on to the larger bones of the body. Let's try to say those words together, appendicular bones. Let's begin near the top of your skeleton with your arm bones. What are your arms attached to? What do they hang down from? If you answered shoulders, you are right. Your shoulders are made up of several different bones. Look at this picture to see how arm bones are connected to the axial skeleton. The large flat triangular bones that you see in the picture are called scalpula or shoulder blades. They are sometimes referred to as wings because they stick out a little from your back. Now look at this picture. The long bones that connect your scapula to the top of your rib cage are called clavicles or collarbones. Shirt collars cover your collarbones. Let's move down your body to the base of your axial skeleton. How are your legs attached to your spine? Legs need a hanger too. Their hanger is called the pelvis a group of strong bones illustrated in this picture. Put your hands on your hips and feel for the bones that stick out at your sides. These are your hip bones or pelvic bones. Your pelvic bones are large bowl-shaped bones that protect your bladder and intestines. Very important organs that help your body function properly. Your pelvis is connected to your spine by the sacrum, a triangular bone that sits between the two hip bones of your pelvis. Leg bones and arm bones are a lot alike, but leg bones are thicker and longer than arm bones. In fact, the longest, heaviest, and strongest bone in your entire body is your leg. Does anyone know the name of this bone? It's your thigh bone or femur. Your femur is connected to your pelvis and extends all the way down to your knee. If you look at the picture, you will see two bones in the lower part of the leg. The larger of the two, the one in the front of the leg, is called the tibia or shin bone. The thinner bone behind it is called the fibula. Both the tibia and the fibula connect the knee to the ankle. That's a lot of information. I suspect that some of you are wondering how all these different bones are connected. Sure, they're attached to hangers, the scapula, and the pelvis, but how? Are they glued in place? The point where two bones meet is called the joint. Without joints, your body would not be able to move. There are three main types of joints in your body, movable, immovable, and partially movable. In other words, some joints can move, some can't, and some move a little bit. Let's take a closer look at all three. The most movable joints in your body are ball and socket joints. Make a fist with one hand, then wrap the fingers of your other hand around it. Your fist is like the ball in the socket of your other hand. You can move the fist around easily inside the other hand, can't you? This type of joint is found in both your hips and shoulders. Ball and socket joints allow you to swing your arms and legs in a full circle. 
other movable joints called hinge joints works like the hinges of a door. Your jawbone has hinges. Can you think of any other hinge joints in your body? Joints that move only back and forth instead of turning in a full circle? Your knees, elbows, ankles, wrists, and knuckles all have hinge joints. In fact, your knee joint connecting your femur to your tibia and fibula is the biggest and strongest joint in your whole body. It lets your body bend at the knees. Stand up and bend at the knees. Imagine trying to walk without those hinge joints. Some joints permit no movement at all. These are called immovable joints because they lock bones together, forming solid bone as hard as a turtle shell. Can you think of any axial bones that fit that description? Yes, your skull is made up of bones that are locked firmly in place, allowing no movement where the bones come together. The third type of joint in your body is the partially movable kind, the ones that move a little bit, but not nearly as much as ball and socket or hinge joints. Can anyone think of an example of a partially movable joint in your body? Remember when you took deep breaths and watched your chest move in and out? The joints where your ribs are joined to your breastbone are a good example of partially movable joints. Remember, cartilage, the soft, grisly tissue found in your nose and backbone and between your vertebrae, cartilage is found at the ends of bones where they connect with joints as well. This smooth, elastic tissue serves as an important purpose. Rub your palms together. Do you feel the heat? If bones and joints rubbed back and forth together like this, nothing in between, your bones would soon wear out. Instead, a smooth, slippery coating of cartilage covers bones where they meet joints, protecting them and helping them to last longer. That makes me think of a riddle. We are tough straps of strong, elastic tissue that bind bones together. Our name has three syllables and comes from a word meaning to tie. What are we? Cartilage protects your bones from rubbing together, but another con connective tissue acts like straps, wrapping around your joints to actually hold your bones together. These thick cords are called ligaments. Some are round like ropes, others are flat like ribbons, but they are all extremely stretchy. Has anyone ever told you that he or she is double jointed? Double jointed people can bend their fingers farther back than other people, but they don't really have extra joints. The ligaments holding their joints together just stretch farther than normal. Is anyone here double jointed? Ligaments and other protective tissues help prevent injuries to your bones. Nevertheless, bones still get injured and wear out. Humans are very active, walking, running, jumping, and playing puts stress on your bones. So what happens if you break a leg, sprain an ankle, or dislocate a joint? Often you must see a doctor, and sometimes your doctor will recommend an x-ray. Now that you have lots of information about the skeletal system, both the axial bones and the appendicular bones, let's take a look at this thing we call an x-ray. These x-rays are various parts of a human skeleton. An x-ray is an invisible light that can travel through the soft tissues of your body, but not through hard bone. After an x-ray passes through you, a picture is recorded on photographic film. Soft tissues appear black on the film because the x-ray passes right through them. But wherever the x-ray is blocked by bone, white areas appear on the picture, allowing doctors to find breaks more easily. X-rays were invented as a medical tool just over 100 years ago. The next time we meet, we'll discuss another important body system, one that works closely with your skeletal system to move your bones. Turn now and talk to your neighbor. See if you agree on the name of the system I'm talking about. Next time, we'll find out if you're right. You may now move on to Unit 3, Lesson 3, Google Form.